Most games that find success on the wide market are easy to understand. What I mean by this is that when you look at their product page, it's easy to see why they are fun and what differentiates them from other games in the genre. A good counterexample of a successful game that is not so easy to understand is Euro Truck Simulator 2. It's one of the most highly rated games on Steam and has thousands of concurrent players even to this day. But if you're not one of these players, you may scratch your head and think, isn't this just a game where I transport cargo from A to B over and over and nothing special ever happens? If I want to drive or race, why wouldn't I just play Need for Speed? There's tons of games out there that find great success, but make it harder to understand why they are fun and what makes them unique. The topic of this video is a game that I think triggers a similar kind of head scratching. Escape from Tarkov, or EFT for short, is a bit more obvious in the sense that it has guns, and it's obviously fun to shoot around with them, but it's difficult to understand what makes it unique to other shooters and what the essence of EFT is. Before I started playing it, I was in exactly this position. It has survival game aspects, as you need to eat and drink. It is similar to Battle Royale, as you have a match-based system where you loot around. You could call it an MMORPG or MMOFPS, as it has levels, skills and quests, and the mechanics behind the guns would make you think that you're in a military simulation, but none of these terms captures the essence of EFT. During my 700 hours of playtime, I tried numerous times to explain the game to my friends, but I could never find the right words, so I tried to find a video that I could send them and say, just look at this, you'll get it, but there was nothing out there. So I figured, if I can't find a video, I'll just make one myself. If you or a friend of yours have been asking the question, what kind of game is Escape from Tarkov? Hopefully you'll find some satisfactory answers in this video. The basic system behind EFT goes like this. You start in the main menu, you equip your character, maybe accept a quest or two, select a map to play, enter the queue either alone or with your friends, spawn into the level, and do your looting and your combat. If you die, you will lose whatever items you have with you. The only way to make it out with the stuff that you brought and the stuff that you found is to make your way to one of the predetermined extract locations. When you reach the correct extract location, a timer will start running down. When it hits zero, you'll extract safely, and the raid is considered a success. Before you load into a map, you get to select your loadout with items that you have in your global inventory called the stash. This global inventory is filled throughout your play rounds, Basically, whatever you find inside the maps, if you manage to extract with it, you get to keep it. There's also vendors where you can spend your money to buy weapons, ammunition, armor, bags, etc. And there's even PvE elements such as quests and NPCs inside the maps themselves. These NPCs are called scavs. They're quite challenging in the beginning, but they do get easier the more you play as you start to understand their behavior and also have better gear of your own. There's also scav raiders, which are a more challenging form of the basic scav. And also scav bosses, which have their own mechanics and sometimes even their own guards, that provide a challenge to even experienced players. Raiders and bosses are however not randomized like regular scavs. You will only find raiders on reserve and labs, while the scav bosses have predetermined locations. For example Sturman, you can only find on woods, and almost always you will find him in the sawmill, while Killa can only be found in the center of interchange. The maps in Escape from Tarkov provide quite a lot of variety. Woods is a big forest with many points of interest distributed within it. There's not many small environments, so it really favors long-range encounters with sniper rifles and the like. There's customs, which especially new players will have to go to quite a lot for quests, which provides more of the mid-range engagement style. There is a couple of open spaces in some distances, but there's also a lot of buildings, so interior fights are also quite common. And then there's maps that clearly favor close quarter encounters, such as labs or factory, that have very small spaces, tons of cover, and are clearly more combat oriented. The maps often provide some type of interactivity as well. For example, customs, shoreline, and reserve have tons of doors that require specific keys to open, and on interchange you have to enable the power before you're able to open certain doors, but then those doors will trigger an alarm, which can be turned off before or afterwards from a different control panel somewhere else on the map. 
It may not sound like much, but it adds a lot of depth to preparing for a specific raid because you have to find and bring the keys first, and then forces you to learn which rooms hold what kind of loot. The quests in Escape from Tarkov have relatively straightforward objectives. It's almost always something along the lines of kill, go somewhere, or bring me something. Now of course there's some variation, so the kill quests might have you kill scavs on a specific map or without wearing body armor, or force you to kill players in a specific part of a specific map. And the go-to quests might have you plant a beacon or hide an item. And the quests that have you deliver a certain item or amount of items will test your knowledge of where these items spawn or have you obtain them in some other way, like crafting. Now there are certain exceptions to this, for example the gunsmith questline from Mechanic that has you mod weapons to reach specific stats and hand them in, but generally the quests are quite simple. Now this doesn't mean that the quests are bad. In fact, I think they're quite fantastic to give you a structure for what you're supposed to do next, as otherwise EFT can be quite overwhelming, especially to new players. Now the quest rewards themselves are quite nice as well, but what they also do is unlock new inventory with the vendors, either by increasing a reputation with them which levels them up to the next level, or by directly unlocking a specific item for purchase after completing a specific quest. As a result, most players, regardless of whether they prefer PvE or PvP, will try their best to complete as many quests as possible as fast as possible. Beyond the stash and the quests, there's another element that gives you a sense of progression, which is the hideout. The hideout is a type of home base of sorts that consists of individual elements, or stations if you will, that give you various benefits. For example, the med station will passively heal you between the matches, meaning you have to use less healing items. While the workbench provides tons of useful recipes for items that you may struggle to find otherwise. Other useful features include the shooting range, which allows you to test certain guns and attachments without losing any ammunition, or the Bitcoin farm, which will passively generate income for you. To be able to upgrade the hideout, you'll need to find certain crafting materials in the open world such as screw nuts, screw bolts, electric drills, and so on, and some of the stations will even require you to level up vendors or skills to a certain level before being able to upgrade them. Speaking of skills, there's a ton of them. You level them up almost always by just doing whatever the skill is for, for example, your endurance levels up as you sprint a lot, and your surgery skill will level by performing surgery on yourself. The increase in benefit is relatively small between the levels, but it makes a huge difference whether you've played on that specific character for 10 hours or 100. You will be able to sprint longer, carry more stuff, throw grenades further, etc. All these things I've described with the quests, the vendor standings, the loadout selection, the hideout, the skills, this only works on your primary character, called the PMC. But you can also load into the maps as a scav. When you do this, you're given a random loadout and random appearance, and load into an already running match. Now same as with your PMC, you get to explore the map, loot around, look for corpses, befriend other scavs, and finally extract. As a scav yourself, no other NPC scav will fire on you unless you attack them first, and other player scavs are discouraged from attacking you as there is a scav karma system in place. I think the scav can be considered a type of safety net. If you run out of equipment on your PMC, you always have the scav which brings you a random loadout if you manage to extract. This is a good way for new players especially to learn the game without running the risk of losing equipment. The only downside here is that you're not able to advance quests and you're not able to level up or skill up your PMC. Now you may wonder, what do you do when you have all the quests completed, when you have relatively high skills and level, when your hideout's completely upgraded, etc? Well, EFT, at least for the time being, has a wipe-based system. This means that between one and a half to maybe three times a year, the progress of everybody playing is reset to level one, and you get to start doing all the quests over again. This usually coincides with some type of big update that changes the way the game works, maybe an update to the quest system or the hideout, and it's usually a really good time for new players to start playing the game. That wraps up my description of EFT from a high level, but there's a few more things that I would like to describe and talk about in a bit more detail. The first of which is the complexity, difficulty, and learning curve of EFT. Escape from Tarkov is very challenging, and it certainly doesn't help that there's no tutorial or easy mode to get you started. The matchmaking does not differentiate between playtime, so you may encounter people who've played the game for hundreds or even thousands of hours, which certainly doesn't help you compete and be successful. I think it's accurate to say that EFT is actually the hardest when you start and gets easier over time. But when I say easier, I do not mean easy. 
the game will feel challenging for hundreds of hours of playtime. Once you get to the stage of understanding the base mechanics and how things work, you'll be able to take a more active role in the rounds. It will be easier to spot the consequences of your decisions and therefore optimize the way you play the game. You will still fail and your survival rate will most likely not exceed 30%, depending on how you play. I'm pointing this out to make it clear that the game will always challenge you and there will always be more learning and improvement that you can do. This leads me very nicely into my next point. Since there's no in-game tutorial, you'll have to rely on external resources. There's tons of different items in EFT ranging from food, ammunition, crafting items, bartering items, weapon attachments, and more. Since the size of your stash in Escape from Tarkov is limited, you'll have to do a lot of tetrising to fit the items that you find, and even then, you'll not be able to fit all of them. The EFT wiki can really help you here. It will tell you which items you have to keep for crafts, quests, or bartering, and which ones you can safely sell or throw away. The wiki also hosts high-quality maps that show the extract locations on each of the levels, and explains how the damage calculation in EFT works. As a new player, you'll often run into situations where you shot some person many times and you feel like they're simply not dying, and the reason for this is almost always you using bad ammunition and them using a good armor. Not understanding how the system works leads to much frustration, so external resources can really help you have more fun with the game. Now I'm left with the most difficult thing to explain, which is the feelings that EFT evokes. In EFT, your life can end very quickly. Sometimes, one bullet is all it takes for you to lose all the equipment you brought, all the loot you found, and quest progression you've made. As a result, it's really important to be aware of your surroundings, and sound plays a big part in this. In fact, there are even combat headphones as their own item type that amplify sounds in different ways, helping you hear other people's movements or even allowing you to identify weapons based on sound alone. Your fragility, constant awareness, and fear of potential loss create a very impressive, immersive, intense experience. When you start playing EFT, the world feels very hostile. Those moments when you sit in a bush and you can hear other players running close to you, and you start thinking about those quest items you found that you really want to take out, and you're just hoping that they will not notice you and move on. Being inside a building, wondering whether you just heard some steps in the corridor, double-checking, triple-checking whether anybody is lurking, waiting to ambush you, being scared to leave the building, because you're not sure if you didn't just hear that one bush rustle. EFT really challenges you and sucks you in. You have to give it your undivided attention. Every little mistake can mean the difference between winning and losing, which makes your choices feel quite important. The intensity of the firefights in EFT is unparalleled. For my first few dozen hours of EFT, I had to do breathing exercises after doing PvP because my heart would race so much and I would be so nervous. Words are really not the best medium to describe emotion and feelings, but I hope that my description has made it at least a little bit clear what to expect. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. I know everybody says this, but it would really help me out if you could leave me a like and maybe even a comment if you have some feedback or questions, and consider subscribing if you like my style of content. Also, there should be a link on the screen for another video of mine, so click that if you're interested. Thanks a lot and have a wonderful rest of your day.